who remember playing with your first Lionel train to the newest generation, that's hooked on Thomas the Tank Engine. Model trains have always held a fascination for people. And joining me today is New Brighton resident Paul Gritzman, who's a member of the Twin City Model Railroad Museum. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you, Ann. Now, trains have always been a part of your life. Can you yeah. tell us how you got started? Well, uh, I think I was four years old. My parents bought me a wind-up train and uh, startled me, but after I found <laughs> out it wouldn't bite, I uh, developed a lifelong hobby. Uh-huh. Well, I um, shot some video over at your house the other day, and we're going to play that because I know people always like to watch some trains, so let's take a look at that, and we can talk about your trains right while we watch it. Now, you've got quite a layout in your house, and a lot of little scenes. Did you kind of add on, or did it, you have a big plan when you started? I've added on and changed it over the years. Getting started, uh, uh, seems like you change your mind just before you get finished. <laughs> and uh, on the scene there is a model of the Hugo Depot. Oh. And uh, that was on the Northern Pacific, and the train that passed in front of it was the train that I used to watch when I got off the bus after high school on the Sioux Line. So this and is a model of an engine that I that I built is from scratch. Okay, and this was a mistake, and all of a sudden there's a huge work crew there. Oh yeah, that started out, I, I, I painted over the uh, plaster too early and it kind of cracked and crazed all up, so um, running out of time to finish for, a, a, for an open house, I, I just turned it into a construction <laughs> site. And, yeah. uh, that was 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it really works. Now, when you develop a scene like we see here, do you keep a certain age, a certain era? I like modeling the 50s. Uh, the steam engines and diesels uh, shared the rails, and that was the name. Uh, name trains were very, were very prevalent part of everyday uh, life, and uh, I just enjoy that period of time. You get to model the nice cars and stuff like that from the 50s. So. Yeah, yeah. And now uh, this part has a, a bridge going over? Yeah, that the bridge is actually let, made out of leftover model stones from when we built the Stone Arch Bridge that's on our layout oh. on the, uh, Bandana Square. And uh, that bridge is over 14 feet long. This one here is about three. <laughs> so. And here we have another train pulling into. Yeah, that's a model of the engine that I brought down today. And that was the engine that... Uh, uh, Casey Jones used to use at the beginning of his show. Sure, I remember and, that. Uh, it also sat at Como Park for many years, so it's an engine that was very close to my heart. Uh huh. And um, where is that now? Uh, that's at the Jackson Street Roundhouse, and they uh, have have been restoring it, and they have hopes of actually running it again. Yeah. Oh, what fun! And then uh, this part I like. <laughs> It oh, yeah. doesn't look like the rest of it. Well, but we've, we've got uh, quite a few grandkids, yeah. and uh, they like coming down and visiting Grandpa. So, And the movie Cars is just like Thomas. If it's not one, it's the other every morning when they come over. And so uh, for a special treat, we go down, and Grandpa plays with his trains, and uh -huh. they play with the little uh, movie cars. They've got their own part. Yeah, so they have that, their own part of the railroad. I like that. I think that's a good idea. Uh, keeps us together. Yeah. So. <laughs> now, let's talk about the Casey Jones train, but that has another number, right? No, that's number 2156. 2156, yeah. Right. Okay. You want to point out a few things on that? Well, this model here um, is about 80% scratch built. Uh, you, I bought the drivers and stuff like that. The rest of it is formed out of brass. Uh, because the engine was still in existence, I had the luxury of being able to go down and take photographs and measure everything, so um, it made it very true to, to the exact size and things. So do you build a lot of your own? Uh, I probably, steam engines take the longest, and I think I've built three of them so far. I'm working on one that's turned out more work than I ever thought it would be. <laughs> but but uh, um, I like building. Uh -huh. That's part of the hobby that I enjoy. My mm -hmm. dad was a model airplane builder, and I couldn't fly that good, so I had to find something that didn't fly. Okay. And, and this is what has been called uh, the dollhouse for guys? That, yes. It's uh, got that same it, fascination. Yeah, actually at night trains, and, uh, that was one of the things that started the whole thing, is you build these cars and put all the interiors inside, and during the day you don't really notice them, even if they are lit. But you turn the lights off, and it's like Disneyland. I mean, wow. it's just 
and the people really stare inside the cars and, and watch them go by, and it takes people back to a lot of memories. Can we take a look inside this one? This, is this a real one special here is kind of nice. The roof comes off, and uh, uh, this one here is a triple combine. On this end here, there would be the uh, post office. Uh, they would start the mail, and here would be the baggage part of the car. And uh, because this was on a branch line, it didn't handle very many passengers, but um, there is accommodations, and then, of course, the restrooms. And uh, they have the flop-over seats, just like the real train. So you did the whole inside. I mean, that's something you just all put together. That yeah, it's kind of like building a dollhouse. Yeah. You, you look around for years, and you see something you like, so you buy a whole bunch of them sure. in case you ever need them. And this is where they end up when you need them. Oh, now, the interior of this, um, this is one that will be lit up at night trains, right? Yes, it will. And uh, this one, unfortunately, the roof doesn't come off. It's, it, the, the floor slides out, and that's very difficult because it's a lot of wiring and details inside there. So I only open it up when I have to change bulbs. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about night trains. Um, that's just for a couple months, right, down at the museum? It's a lot of extra work because you have to keep everything in good operating condition. And, and working in the dark is very difficult. Yeah. And uh, we do get uh, quite a few people that come. And uh, so it gets a lot of visiting in that. It's pretty intense. Though. You're very tired. But we, we do that on Saturday nights, and it starts right after Thanksgiving. And then uh, we stay uh, running night trains till the end of February. So the start time for that each night is? 6 o'clock. Uh, Saturday nights. Saturday nights. Saturday nights only. Yep. 6 o'clock and runs till? Till 9 o'clock. Okay. And if we're real busy, we stay open a little later, whatever it takes. Sure. Well, I went last year. I, I, I thought it was just wonderful. And like you say, to be able to look in as those trains go past and see little people sitting there eating their dinner <laughs> in the trains. It is a lot of fun. And, of course, we started building the passenger cars. Well, the guys that make the buildings, they have their own artistry and the interior details, and they weren't going to be outdone, so they put lights in everything. <laughs> and and uh, pretty soon we had street lights going around, and uh, they started putting lights on some of the vehicles. It's, I tell people it's like Disneyland without the airfare. Yes, yes. People should definitely go down there if they, if they get a chance. Well, Paul, I want to thank you for bringing everything in here today. It's fun to look at this and um, it's my pleasure. And thank you very much. Thank you very much.